Hello, welcome back to the desk corner. In today's video, I'm challenging myself to do another black paper drawing, and this time I'm going to attempt to draw a portrait with white pencil. I'm using the same Strathmore black paper that you've seen me use in previous videos. If you guys haven't yet seen my white pencil comparison video, go ahead and watch that and you'll see me do this cat demonstration with these four pencils, the Luminance, the Derwent drawing pencil, the Polychromos White, and then the newest edition, the Holbein Soft White, which if you want to hear more about that, you'll see that in my other video where I test it out and really compare the brightness level to other white pencils. But anyways, I'm going to use these same four pencils in today's portrait drawing, so wish me luck. The first issue I ran into was trying to sketch this out directly onto the paper. Even using a kneaded eraser would create these terrible marks that I couldn't get rid of. So I decided to do my sketch separately and then transfer it over. I didn't really know what to use though, so I just used a white pastel stick that I had. And this is printer paper, by the way, so I knew my mistake. I ended up with a lot of extra powder excess on the paper that I had to try and get rid of, but I knew that this was going to result in a messy transfer. I just didn't know what else to do really. So once I covered the back of the white paper with the pastel, I placed it on top of the black paper. I had to hold that white paper in place and then use a mechanical pencil to go over the sketch again so you can see how dark the lines are getting because I'm using extra pressure to ensure that the lines will go through and press that white pastel into the black paper. I was very nervous doing this since I haven't actually transferred a sketch this way before and since I knew that it was going to be really messy when I lifted the white paper just because of all that loose pastel powder. And oh my gosh, look at the mess. So then what I had to do was go in with my kneaded eraser very lightly so I wasn't creating like marks on the black paper and I just lifted up some of that pastel powder. Again, do not try this at home, kids. I am clearly not a professional at transferring and if any of you guys have a better method, then let me know. I might need to buy some more things in order to do this properly because again, I was just using a random pastel stick that I had, but it worked. The lines went through even though it left a huge mess underneath. And you guys, if you haven't used black paper before, I'd really recommend using a kneaded eraser and definitely not a white eraser because it tends to create marks. So you have to be very gentle with the paper already. And a kneaded eraser is much more gentle than a white eraser. Once I cleaned up my sketch, I went in and started to shade or color, I guess you could say. And this was very challenging for me because I'm used to drawing portraits, usually on white paper and building up the darker value slowly. But since the darkest value is already there, it's really hard for me to create a mid-tone with these white pencils because it is a one color challenge as well. And the white pencils came off as very bright. So what I ended up doing was using my Faber-Castell Polychromos white a lot more often than the other ones because I was able to create more of a mid-tone since that's the least opaque white. Even though it still showed up pretty bright on the black paper, it's not quite as bright as the other three white pencils. The Holbein Soft White is definitely the brightest, so I only reserved that for the brightest highlights, and I was very careful not to use it too much and just use it sparingly because it just shows up way too well, and it definitely would take out some of the contrast if I used it too much because I would have too many bright areas. So that's where I faced another challenge, is I had to go in with my eraser a lot and get rid of areas that were becoming too bright because it was kind of creating more of a flat look and I wasn't getting as much contrast as I wanted. And I didn't really know if I wanted there to just be hints of her face. At first I wanted to just create maybe hints and so it looked like she was maybe in the shadow. But then I wanted to color in more with the white to see if I could create a mid-tone and more value the same way I would with like a graphite portrait for example. But I found this to be actually very, very challenging. Another thing is working with some of the negative space like the eyelashes, eyebrow, the nostril, and then even the lips as well. I had to make sure that I was preserving the black areas, the dark areas, because those were the areas that needed to stay free of the white pencil or any smears or smudges. So it was a little bit 
difficult drawing those in in like the negative space and the opposite way that I normally would if that makes any sense. Also, just like I mentioned in my previous video where I drew the cat, the Polychromos proved to be the best pencil for creating details or crisp lines since it's firmer and you can sharpen it and it'll stay at a point longer than the other white pencils because the other ones are just very soft, which has its own benefits but doesn't work so well for creating smaller details or sharper lines. At this point, I started to actually put too much white down and lose my contrast, and so you'll see me go in a lot throughout the rest of the video with my kneaded eraser, and I almost used it as if it was a black pencil. I was trying to kind of erase some of those areas that were turning a little too white, even though I intended for them to be mid-tones. And luckily, since I wasn't using a lot of pressure in these areas, the kneaded eraser was able to pick up a lot of the white, but again, I didn't want to damage the paper too much because using an eraser on black paper usually ends up with marks. But you can see at the point the drawing is now, it doesn't seem like there's quite enough contrast because I haven't left enough areas black. And I was starting to realize this as I was looking at this from the camera's point of view, the viewfinder, that this was not looking how I wanted it to look. The brightest areas or the brightest highlights were on the cheekbone, the chin, and then a little bit around the nose, lips, and eye. So those were the areas that I tried to get the most opaque white and use my brightest pencils. And this was another attempt to create more contrast. So you could see when I do use that soft white how bright those highlights are getting. I'm very impressed with the soft white and I like it a lot. The consistency is a little strange, I talked about that in my other video. It's not anything that I've used before so it takes a little bit getting used to but I think it was a worthwhile purchase because now it's actually my brightest white pencil because I did compare them to all the other white pencils in my previous video and this one is definitely the brightest. I went in with my kneaded eraser to get rid of some of the midtones, and it's looking kind of patchy, but I will go in and fix that a bit later. I decided to move on and start to work on like the neck, ear, and shoulders. And this part I was excited for because I absolutely love when a portrait reference photo includes the neck or the shoulders because then I get to practice my anatomy just a little bit and where the muscles are supposed to be and all of that. But it was really hard for me to do this with the white pencil because there were some creases and things that I had to leave black. And that's kind of the opposite of what I would normally do. So working in like the negative space rather than the way I normally work on white paper is very challenging. And since portraits are one of the most challenging things to draw for me, even though they are something that I'm used to and I love drawing, they're very challenging. And so working on the black paper in a totally different method, of course, is going to make it even more challenging. Although I did have fun trying to figure out what I was doing with the white pencil, even though at first I'm not sure that I was getting that structure in the neck quite right. I also was maybe creating too bright of highlights as well, so I will go in again with the kneaded eraser to fix that. And I think if I were to give any advice on somebody trying to do this, I think less is more. And when you start to add too much of the white pencil, it just becomes a little bit overpowering. So that's what I would remember if I was going to try and do this again another time. Kind of like how there was a really bright highlight on the cheekbone, there was also one on the shoulder as well. And so this one I really wanted to build up first with the polychromos, then with I think the Derwent or the Luminance, and then the soft white to really build up the intensity of that and make it look very opaque. Same with the ear, there were some very opaque highlights in the ear as well. And 
Even though this was getting to be a lot of white, I knew that the hair was going to be kept really minimal with just hints of it being there. I actually wish that I had gone the minimalistic route for the rest of the drawing as well, but luckily since the hair occupies so much space in the drawing, the contrast between the hair and then the actual face, neck, and shoulders I think helped to round out the drawing and make it look a little better in the end just because I was only creating hints of the hair. And yes, I was using my Faber-Castell Polychromos, which is best for details to create those hints of hair. And you can see me working on the hair now. This part was just so much fun and so little effort in comparison to how hard hair is on like white paper when you're building it up. I have to say this was so much fun in contrast and now I wanna draw another portrait on black paper again just because I don't have to worry much about the hair. It just comes together on its own really. And so then I was trying to work on the neck, which looked kind of funny. I don't think I like how the neck and shoulder area turned out very much. That's definitely something I would work on if I was to do something like this again. But really, it's my first portrait on black paper, so I can't really expect it all to turn out perfectly. One of the problem areas I had was the jaw, which actually was a dark shadow, and so I had to leave that area black, but then I also wanted it to nicely transition into the highlight above it. I don't think I actually nailed that. I think that maybe I could have created more of a smooth transition, but that's something I have to learn is creating those transitions with white rather than like if you were to use black, like charcoal, on white paper and creating those mid-tones is easier since you can just kind of use the charcoal powder itself. So I guess using white charcoal might actually be easier. Maybe that's the next thing I'll do is use white charcoal since you can actually use the powder and blend it a little bit to create your mid-tones. I think that's what I'll do if I try to create another white portrait on black paper. All right, you guys, we're getting towards the end here. Do I like how this turned out overall? Yes. Do I think it's my best portrait work? No, definitely not. I think I could use a lot of work practicing with white pencil and black paper, but that's okay. I think that I successfully completed this challenge in the end and my drawing turned out just fine. And this is the final result, you guys. I'm going to grab my cat drawing to put up beside this. They are very similar, of course, in the pose, but I didn't decide to add anything extra to my portrait like snowflakes because I felt like it filled up the space enough and didn't really need anything additional to distract from the main picture. So that was that. Let me know what you guys thought if I succeeded in this challenge or not. And if you've done this before or you have more expertise, let me know what your tips are because I definitely could use them. I think I've done some fairly decent demonstrations with this Holbein Soft White. I really recommend it if you'd like a very bright white to complement whatever colored pencil set that you guys have. And thank you as always so much for watching today's video. That's about all I have for you guys. Don't forget to comment down below and leave your thoughts, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!